Hey everyone, it is officially Black Friday and there are a ton of great deals out there that I quickly wanted to talk through. But before we get to that point, sincerely, I just wanted to thank you for all the support. You've all been awesome and I just wanted to thank you for that. So we're gonna quickly talk through these deals. I have a website article that I'll be updating kind of throughout the day uh, because these deals are constantly changing. There are already a lot of deals that are actually out of stock, unfortunately. But we're gonna quickly talk through everything. There's a lot of them. So I'll leave that link in the description in case you wanna check that out, but we're gonna jump right into it. Okay, so the first is the Synology DS223. This has gone on sale for less, but it's like $10 less. Overall, this is really not that bad of a deal. It's not my favorite NAS, I'm not gonna lie about that. But if you wanna use it for like an offsite backup or you just want something as a starter NAS, this is a pretty good place to start. It supports the BTRFS file system. It basically allows you to configure the NAS the same way you'd configure any Synology. So you get DSM, which is generally known as an enterprise grade operating system. And overall, while this is very underpowered compared to Synology's other options, for this price, it's really not that bad, especially as an offsite backup. If you want a more powerful two bay NAS, this is gonna be the one. It's on the Lightning deal, so I don't know how long this is gonna last. But for 360 bucks, you get the DS723+, Plus, which has the exact same processor as the DS923+, Plus, which we'll take a look at in a second. But it has the same processor as the DS923+, Plus, and overall, it allows you to expand it with the DX517 expansion unit. I don't know if you'd actually do that, but you would need this specific 2-bay NAS if you want to expand it. So overall, for the price, not the best, but also not the worst. I'd probably side towards the DS923 Plus if you can spend another 150 bucks. But if you can't and you want a two-bay NAS device, this is a great price. Now the DS923 Plus, as of right this second, is out of stock on Amazon. However, it's still in stock on Newegg. So it's $509. It has a combo deal where you could basically buy hard drives. I'd probably suggest you don't do that. We're gonna get to a bunch of hard drives that are on sale. But for $509, you get the DS923 Plus. We have no idea if and when the DS925, 926, who knows? Uh, but we have no idea when it's coming. These very rarely go on sale. Generally, it's Black Friday, Amazon Prime Day, and maybe one other time throughout the year. So if you want a four-base Synology NAS device, this is gonna be the best time to buy it. Similar to the 923 Plus, this is currently out of stock at Amazon, but it's still in stock at Newegg. Uh, the 1821 plus so we're rumored to be getting a ds 1825 plus obviously we have no idea when but robbie over at nas compares projects that the ds 1825 plus will probably have the exact same processor now it's rumored to have four gigabytes more of memory this comes with four gigabytes that is rumored to have eight gigabytes and it's rumored to have two two and a half gigabit NICs, while this has four one gigabit NICs. So what does all that mean? In my opinion, if that is actually the case, this is gonna be the device to purchase. You should save the money. It's a hundred bucks, it's not on super sale. But if that is true, that the DS1825 Plus is really just an incremental upgrade, this becomes a good deal because overall, you're getting basically the DS1825 Plus minus some memory and some networking. But generally, if you buy an 8-bay NAS device, you're probably gonna look to upgrade the networking to 10 gig. And in that case, it's kind of gonna be identical from a networking perspective. So I'd save the 100 bucks, but obviously, take that with the disclaimer, we have no idea what the DS1825 Plus will have in it. Next is going to be a QNAP device. So overall, QNAP's operating system is kind of known as being the second best compared to something like Synology. So Synology is known as having the best pre-built NAS operating system. QNAP is kind of regarded as the second best. So it's not necessarily something like TerraMaster or even Ugreen, but it isn't Synology DSM either. So for $469, you get a pretty powerful device with an Intel Celeron processor, not the best, but for the price, it's also not the worst. You get two, two and a half gigabit NICs, you get eight gigabytes of RAM, so you're really purchasing this mainly if you want QNAP's operating system. If you don't want QNAP's operating system and you want to install your own, there are better options, which we'll quickly talk through. But for the price, this is really not that bad. Now, again, Robbie over at NAS Compares did a full review on this specific device. And overall, his takeaway was that it's fine. It's not amazing by any means. 
The build quality is not the best, but for the price, for eight gigs of DDR5 memory, you get an NVMe SSD where you can install your own operating system. You get two, two and a half gigabit NICs. It's not the worst. However, if you plan on buying something like this, I'd recommend that you go and watch his video because it'll give you an understanding of exactly what you're buying into. I don't think that this is actually gonna sell out. So it's not something you probably have to rush to buy, but watch his video. If your takeaway is that you're okay with some of its shortcomings, then this is a very good price. It's normally like 350 or $360. So you're talking probably 10 or 15% off, not 20% off like it says, but it's really not that bad of a price for what you're getting with an N100 processor. I'll be quick because I talked through this in my last video. This is a great, great, great device for the price. The problem with it is the TOS 6 operating system. TOS 6 has gotten better. It's not quite where it needs to be, but you get a great processor. You get 16 gigs of DDR5 memory and two, two and a half gigabit NICs. For the price, if you're willing to install your own operating system, this is a great deal. Same with this device. It's been bouncing in and out of stock, so I don't know what the price is gonna be when you see it. This, I would not buy it for $665, but it was on sale for like 555 or 565, something like that. If when you check, it's that price, it's not a bad deal by any means. I would still side with the Terra Master that we just talked through if 10 gig networking is not important to you. If it is important to you, then this is kind of the device that you should get. Again, with the understanding that Ugreen's operating system is not the best. However, since it has an HDMI port, you can install whatever operating system you want. If you just want a two bay NAS device, this is probably the cheapest one that you're gonna find, especially for the hardware. So overall, decent option as well. So we're gonna to switch to hard drives at this point, mainly NAS hard drives. So I talked through this in the last video. 24 terabytes for 400 bucks is still an amazing deal. I understand $400 is a lot for a hard drive, so I'm not necessarily suggesting that you buy this, but purely from a price to terabyte perspective, this is a great deal. If that's a little too much, the 16 terabyte model is on sale for $250. This is actually a better deal than the 24 terabyte model, but not by much. You're talking about $15.62 per terabyte, so it's really not that terrible of a deal by any means. And it's an Iron Wolf Pro drive. For your reference, the 24 terabyte model is about $16.62. So it's about a dollar less per terabyte than the 24 terabyte model. And then the 20 terabyte model is on sale as well, which is around the same. So these are the three drives I'd suggest, the 16, the 20, and the 24. Realistically, from a price to terabyte perspective, they're all about the same. So you're not really better or worse off buying any of them, but those are gonna be the quote unquote best price to terabyte ratios. If your only factor is price, you can buy the eight terabyte model for 150 bucks, but honestly, from a price to terabyte perspective, this is not the best. However, those other models are. If you are interested in that eight terabyte model, you should probably look at this six terabyte model from Western Digital. It's a WD Red Plus drive, so it's CMR. It's a hundred bucks for six terabytes. So it's right in that $16.60 per terabyte range. So it's really not the worst. So it's a pretty good deal. Granted, six terabytes in 2024, almost 2025, is starting to become a very small drive at this point, especially when there are 24 terabyte drives. But purely priced a terabyte, this is not a bad deal. Quite honestly, there are no other good Western digital deals. I would stick with Seagate if you're looking for larger drives. Now this is the absolute best drive from a price to terabyte perspective. It is a Western Digital Elements external drive. Now you can buy this as a local backup or you can actually shuck the drive. There are a ton of tutorials online, but shucking a drive mainly means taking it out of this enclosure here. So there's a way that you kind of pop it open. I've done it a lot, but you kind of pop it open and you slide it out and it's a Western Digital white labeled red drive. So the label itself is white, but it's generally the exact same thing as the actual Western Digital red drives. So this is $13.50 from a price to terabyte ratio. This is by far and away the cheapest with the understanding that it's in an enclosure. It's not the same as getting an internal hard drive and just kind of popping it into your NAS. So if you either wanna keep it in its enclosure or you want to shuck the drive, this is gonna be the overall best price to terabyte ratio. It is not currently on sale at Amazon, but things on Amazon seem to be coming in and out of stock. So take that disclaimer. 
All right, we're gonna switch over to mini PCs. This mini PC is generally regarded as the best overall mini PC that you can buy for home labbing purposes. It is an i9-12900 processor, but it is bare bones. So it's the same thing, the 13900 is on sale as well. The bare bones model for 670 bucks, I'd probably save the 150 bucks, quite honestly, and go with the 12900H, mainly because you still have to fill this with an SSD as well as memory. But the huge thing that everybody loves about this device is that it comes with two 10 gigabit SFP plus ports and two two and a half gigabit NICs. It also has a bunch of USB 4 ports and stuff like that. So there's a lot here, but this is generally regarded as kind of like the home lab king from a pure mini PC perspective. And $519, when you take into consideration the networking that you get with it, granted, you have to fill it up with memory and an SSD. But for the price, it's really not that bad. If you want to buy the actual device with memory and an SSD, it's like 680 bucks. If you buy the memory and the SSD separately, you can probably save a little bit of money. But if you're looking purely just to try to get a single device, $687 for the 12900H is really not the worst. If you're looking for just a regular mini PC, this thing is pretty damn beefy for the price. So it comes with a Ryzen 9 6900HX. The downside of Ryzen processors is if you're looking to use some sort of hardware transcoding, they're generally known as being worse than Intel in this regard. So you might be pushed to an Intel model if you're looking to do any sort of hardware transcoding so that you can get Intel QuickSync. If you don't want Intel QuickSync and you're just looking to set up like a hypervisor or even just use it as a mini PC, you get 24 gigabytes of memory, you get a one terabyte SSD, and the processor is powerful for the money. So overall, I have never used this device, but purely for the actual hardware that you're getting for the price, it can be viewed as a good deal. If you're looking for a mini PC that I have and use, this is it. There's a lot you can do. It's an N100 processor. It comes with eight gigabytes of memory and a 256 gigabyte SSD. Overall, powerful for the money, not nearly as powerful as what we just talked about though. All right, so we're quickly gonna switch over to an NVMe SSD. So NVMe SSDs are tough because a lot of people use this specific drive as NVMe caching for NAS devices. I'm somewhere on the fence where I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but purely from the price, it is a good price for what you're getting. I would upgrade the firmware as soon as you get it. I'd always upgrade the firmware on these NVMe SSDs, especially if you happen to go with the 990 Pro. Early models had some sort of an issue that was fixed with a firmware update. Would I use this as NVMe cache? Probably not. Do a lot of people use it with NVMe cache? Yes. This is the specific drive that I would use if you're looking for NVMe cache because this is a NAS grade NVMe SSD. NVMe SSDs are generally compared using something called TBW, terabytes written. There are other ways, but that's kind of the easiest in my opinion to view them as. This two terabyte NVMe SSD has a 2,500 terabyte written limit, meaning that the warranty is safe for up to 2,500 terabytes written. The 980 Pro is somewhere around 1,200. So the exact same drive, but this is rated as over two times the endurance. So the idea is that this drive should last theoretically two times longer. And for SSD caching, especially read write cache, for read cache, you can generally use whatever you want. For read write cache, I kind of recommend that you get a NAS grade and or enterprise grade NVMe SSD. The downside being that this is a Gen 3 NVMe SSD, whereas this is a Gen 4 NVMe SSD. So depending on where you're putting it, the device you're putting it in, this will potentially run significantly faster. But if endurance is important to you, just go with the Western Digital. It should last you longer. Okay, we're gonna totally switch gears at this point. Ubiquity is running a Black Friday sale. The Unify Express here, is on sale. This is if you have a regular ISP router or you have like a Linksys or a Netgear router and you're looking to upgrade it, this is a good place to start. Mainly because when you start to get into things like Ubiquiti routers and firewalls, they don't come built in with Wi-Fi. So if you buy like 
a UDM Pro Max. It doesn't have Wi-Fi. You have to buy a switch potentially and an access point. So this is a good place to start with the understanding that this device is kind of basic and you might get this and absolutely love it, but you're probably gonna upgrade it at some point, but you might not at the same time. So if you're looking to get into the Unify ecosystem, for the price, you get a powerful firewall plus Wi-Fi access point. So this is a good model to start at. Next would be this dream wall. I don't know if you'd realistically buy this, but similar to the Unify Express, this has everything built in. So it has a Wi-Fi 6 access point built in. You can do three and a half gigabits plus of IDS and IPS, which is identity detection and identity prevention. So it detects and can block threats. I recently did a setup video that I'll leave a link for somewhere that will give you an idea of kind of what you can do with these devices. But this is a more powerful option than the Unify Express. This will last you for a long time, whereas the Unify Express, you'll probably upgrade at some point, but it's $600 more. Don't know if I'd start here, but that is an option. Now, some of their switches, like the 10 gigabit switch here is a great price. You're realistically not gonna find this for a better price. It's gonna be hard to find a 10 gigabit switch with the management interface that Unify provides for the money. The Pro Max 16 and the Pro Max 24 are great deals as well if you do not need PoE. PoE is power over ethernet. If you don't need PoE, these are two great switches. If you do need PoE, this is not gonna be a switch that you should purchase. There's a bunch of other stuff here. There's a lot of cameras that are on sale. Some of them are really on sale, like this AI DSLR is marked down from 2,500 to 1,000. If you wanna use Unify Protect and you want some of these cameras, this is gonna be the best time that you could buy them with the understanding that these cameras are still a lot more expensive than some of the other cameras that you could buy. But this is an all-in-one integrated system. You're buying into a system more so than the cameras themselves, but these have AI detection. You can compare and contrast them, but if you don't wanna go the ubiquity route and you need an eight port 10 gig switch, for the money, this is really not that bad. It's from a known name. TP-Link is a known name. The downside being that it's unmanaged. So if you want a managed switch, it's gonna cost more. But if you're purely looking for a 10 gig switch for $299 to have eight ports, that's not a bad price by any means. Finally, I'm gonna throw this in there. This has nothing to do with home labs. I just love this thing. I bought this a while ago. This can charge a laptop if you have like a MacBook. This could charge a MacBook. This could charge basically everything in your life. I have no idea why I'm showing you this. I just love it so much and it's on sale, so figured I would. Finally, UPS devices. I recommend that everybody gets a UPS device. Quite honestly, these are not good sales, speaking honestly. I've never used this brand. It is a good sell, it seems, compared to its list price. And looking at it on the site Camel, 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 which goes through and actually tracks the price, it is on sale for a good price. The downside is I know nothing about this brand. So for a thousand VA, 800 watts, it's right where it kind of needs to be. This is a much better device because this is pure sine wave. Generally, the devices you're gonna buy are either simulated sine wave or pure sine wave. Pure sine wave is better because it's the cleanest power source. The problem is, it's not on sale. I do love these devices. I have two of these and I have one of these and I might have to buy another one of these. So I do love these devices. Unfortunately, they're not on sale and it doesn't seem like there are any good UPS device sales. But either way, I do recommend you have a UPS, just maybe not right now is the best time to buy. Finally, I recommended this device a few times now. I own this device. I like that it's USB-A and USB-C. This is the absolute lowest I've ever seen it. It was on sale for like $3 more a few days ago. If you need to add two and a half gigabit networking to a device, this is the device that I'd recommend that you buy. So those are the best deals that I have found up to this point. Like I said, I will be updating that website article throughout the day. So if you wanna check that out, there's probably gonna be more deals. I'm gonna to try to cycle in things that are actually in stock because a lot of this is going out of stock at this point. So check out that article if you want. But if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.